Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, whatever time you are watching this worship service. We are so glad you are with us at St. Olaf Lutheran Church. We have three options this weekend. We have a 5 o'clock Saturday night service, a Sunday morning at 9 a.m. outdoors, as well as obviously this online service. This is a big rally day weekend, you could say, and we are celebrating Justine Cadena's 20 years of ministry as our youth minister. So we're very thankful. If you'd like to join us on Sunday for that, please come. Today, we are focused on the theme of creation, and it's actually the second creation story found in Genesis 2 and 3. We also celebrate St. Francis and his spirituality and his care for creation. In fact, some of our people are going to bring pets so we may bless them. And especially in these times of isolation, it's so important for us to have that companionship that friend, as it talks about in Genesis, and as it talks about in the scriptures of that importance of having a friend like we have a friend in Jesus. And so we're going to begin our worship with Psalm 148. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him, all you angels. Praise him, all his host. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, you highest heavens and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded and they were created. He established them forever and ever. He fixed their bounds, which cannot be passed. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters and all deeps. Fire and hail, snow and frost, stormy wind fulfilling his command. Mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild animals and all cattle, creeping things and flying birds, kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and rulers of the earth, young men and women alike, old and young together. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His glory is above earth and heaven. He has raised up a horn for his people. Praise for all his faithful, for the people of Israel who are close to him. Praise the Lord. This beautiful hymn found in our Evangelical Lutheran worship hymnal is called All Creatures of Our God and King. And the words are actually from St. Francis of Assisi. So let's join in in singing this together now. of our God and King. Lift up your voice and with us sing. Alleluia, Alleluia. Thou burning sun with golden beam, thou silver moon with softer gleam. Oh, praise Him, oh, praise Him. Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. Thou rushing wind that art so strong, ye clouds that sail in heaven along, oh, praise him, Alleluia. Thou rising morn in praise rejoice, ye lights of evening find a voice. Oh, praise Him. Oh, praise Him. Alleluia. 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 Thou flowing water, pure and clear, make music for the Lord to Master full and bright, thou givest man both warmth and light. Oh, praise him, oh, praise him. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. And all ye men of tender heart, forgive ye others take your part oh sing ye alleluia ye who long pain and sorrow bear praise god on him 
cast all your care. Oh, praise Him. Oh, praise Him. Alleluia. 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 Let all things their Creator bless and worship Him in humbleness. Son and praise the Spirit three in one. Oh, praise Him! Oh, praise Him! Alleluia! 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 Let us confess our sins before God and one another in a time of silence. God of all ages, you have chosen us as your own, yet we so often live as if it were not so. We succumb to things which are not good for us. We believe we know better than you. We refuse to put our trust in your promises. Sweep away our foolishness and bring us back into a trusting relationship with the one who has lovingly created us and longs to be our strength in life. Dear people, hear these joyful words that God has forgiven us. Our misdeeds and folly are forgotten. Grace and mercy abound. Let us give thanks that we have a compassionate creator. Amen. Let us pray. Merciful God, you created people not as subjects to rule, but as partners in tending and enjoying this bountiful earth. Help us release our shame and guilt over what we have done wrong, accepting instead your mercy and forgiveness offered through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As we prepare our minds and hearts to listen to the word of God in Scripture from Genesis 2 and 3, the creation story, we recognize that God speaks to us in the written word and in the spoken word. And this hymn prepares us to receive this word with honor, with respect, with a sense of listening ears that we want to hear more. Let's sing ancient words together.
We are most familiar with the creation story found in Genesis 1. However, today we are going to hear the second creation story, and that's found in Genesis 2 and 3. So let's tune in right now. As it reads, In the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens, when no plant of the field was yet in the earth, and no herb of the field had yet sprung up, for the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was no one to till the ground. But a stream would rise from the earth and water the whole face of the ground. And the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed in his nostrils the breath of life. And the human became a living being. Now the Lord God had planted a garden in the east, in Eden, and there he put the man he had formed. The Lord God made all kinds of trees grow out of the ground, trees that were pleasing to the eye and good for food. In the middle of the garden were the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to work it, and to care, take care of it. And the Lord God commanded the man, You are free to eat from any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For when you eat from it, you will certainly die. The Lord God said, It is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. Now the Lord God had formed out of the ground all the wild animals and all the birds in the sky, and he brought them to the man to see what he would name them. And whatever the man called each living creature, that was its name. So the man gave names to all the livestock, the birds in the sky, and to the wild animals. But for Adam, no suitable helper was found. So the Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep. And while he was sleeping, he took one of the man's ribs and then closed up the place with flesh. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib he had taken out of the man, and he brought her to the man. The man said, Now this is now bone of my bones, flesh of my flesh. So shall be called woman, for she was taken out of man. That is why a man leaves his father and mother and is united to his wife, and they become one flesh. Adam and his wife were both naked, and they felt no shame. Now we turn to chapter 3. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other wild animal that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did God say you shall not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the tr fruit of the trees in the garden, but God said you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the middle of the garden, nor shall you touch it, or you shall die. But the serpent said to the woman, You will not die, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw the tree was good for food, and that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. And she also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both were open, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made loincloths for themselves. They heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. We've had some wonderful, beautiful, warm summer days just a few, just a week ago. And uh, it's been wonderful for our outdoor services. Every service has been great outside. 
And uh, as you've experienced this week, we've had a very cool week, a lot more rain, um, and you can sense that autumn is here. It's my favorite season. I love the smell of campfires, watching the leaves fall to the ground, wearing long sleeves and hiking boots, and experiencing the array of beautiful fall colors. So many blessings from God. One way for us to take in the blessings of life is to take in a deep breath of air. Will you please take a slow, deep breath of fresh air with me? One more time. Yeah, you can hear the congestion in my voice. I don't know what it is. It must be the season, the dust that goes around when the breeze is there. But I still have breath. Did you hear that phrase from Scripture? God breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Yes, God gives us the air that we breathe. Without it, we can't live. Obviously, this photo that you see takes, takes us to our outdoor worship venue. Some of you have been there before. So if you can envision yourself there, I invite you to, as if you're there, take a look around at God's creation. Now, first of all, if you were there, you might be able to sense a smell of pine trees or the freshly mowed grass that's usually done on Saturday or the fields nearby. And then if you were to use your eyes, you might look around and see birds in the air or maybe the horses over there adjacent to our property. We might not be able to see the crops of beans and corn that are right behind our parking lot or behind the parsonage. But if we walked a few steps, we could. And if you walk around the broader neighborhood, we might even see some cows for milking or for beef. Now, if you have a pet and you're sitting near a pet, look at your pet near you. All these are God's blessings, blessings of God's creation. So today I'd like to center us on four words that begin with the letter C. Yeah, it sounds like a Sesame Street theme, right? Um, but they're all related to the, the passage from Genesis. So our first one is God created us for a purpose to care for and cultivate the land and all that's in it. Secondly, God gave us companions to do life together with. And thirdly, confession leads us to honoring God. Let's begin with the first two words, care and cultivate. In Genesis 2, God makes clear that humankind has a purpose, and that is to care for and cultivate God's creation. As country bumpkins, we get this. How many of you have planted something this year? Raise your hand. Raise your hand if you have a garden. Raise your hand if, if some of your produce is being delivered to our friends in Milwaukee at All People's Church. That's what it's all about. We, we heard in today's translation from the Hebrew that we are to work it and to take care of it. If you look at the Hebrew word, it can be translated in many ways, like we are called to serve the ground, okay? That's a bod in Hebrew. In the Common English Bible, it reads to farm it. Others say to cultivate it. The Hebrew word abad loses its semantic resonance, okay? Its real root is connected to, the, to worship. And so you really want to tie it in with honor. So that word ver the Hebrew verb abad means to honor. And when it's thinned down to till or work or farm or cultivate, it's not quite complete. Whereas Jewish people would understand that it's all about honoring God by caring for God's creation, keeping it healthy and thriving and not overusing or abusing it. This summer, our family watched the remake of the movie Lion King with real animals. It's powerful to think of God's creatures intimately connected to one another for survival. There's a sense with all the creatures looking at the Lion King and everything is thriving all around them. It's a beautiful scene. However, later in the movie, a new king emerged that led to the earth being ravaged and the animals fleeing. Now, some of you have been to the Boundary Waters. I have been multiple times. And it's still in that pristine, natural condition because it's deliberately and delicately cared for. You also learn how important it is to care for nature, for when it's neglected, overused, or ravaged, it's difficult for it to come back to life. 
However, it can be done. I was talking with Dave Johnston this past week, and he shared how Lake Erie, not far from where he grew up, was dead in the 1960s and 70s. So much pollution and poison in the lake killed the living creatures and vegetation living in it. Well, with some concentrated attention and care, Lake Erie thrives today. And even our own Roger Johnson pulls out walleyes galore out of Erie, just like he did a few weeks ago. One of my favorite places in the world is the Amazon River Basin. When we honor God by caring for God's creation and cultivating the earth, it leads to the world being fed, uh, the interconnection of God's creatures thriving in their natural way, and healthy patterns of weather bringing forth rain and sunshine in balance. However, when we pursue wealth and greed, and that becomes our motivation, there are consequences to our actions that can lead to natural disasters drought, loss of species, habitat, and the world no longer in balance ecologically. Most of us would not really be aware of how our world is losing a significant portion of its species as we burn the lands and sent animals and birds away into homelessness, as you can see with the images uh, from the Amazon. According to a new report, animal populations have declined by such a staggering amount that the only possible way to reverse the damage would be an overhaul of the world's economic systems. Nearly 4,400 monitored species around the world have declined by an average of 68% between 1970 and 2016, according to the World Wildlife Fund's Living Planet Report 2020. Species in Latin America and the Caribbean, as well as global freshwater habitats, were disproportionately impacted, declining on average 94% and 84% respectively. Every two years, the World Wildlife Fund releases its report that reveals how far species populations have declined since 1970. The latest report shows the rate of populations are declining, signal a fundamentally broken relationship between humans and the natural world, the consequences of which, as demonstrated by the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, can be catastrophic. This report reminds us that we destroy the planet at our peril because it, because it is our home. As humanity's footprint expands into one, one's wild places, we're devastating species populations but we're also exacerbating climate change and increasing the risk of zoonotic diseases like COVID-19. We cannot shield humanity from the impact of environmental destruction. It's time to restore a broken relationship with nature for the benefit of species and people alike. The report points to the exponential growth of human consumption, population, global trade, and urbanization over the last 50 years as key reasons for the unprecedented decline of Earth's resources, which it says the planet is not capable of replenishing. The report points to land use change, food production, and climate change as reasons for the decline in animal population over the years. Could the three million acres burning out west be a result of climate change? However, it urges that current trends can be flattened and even reversed with urgent action. I wonder what God would have us do as his caretakers, as his stewards. Our third C is companionship. Can you imagine life in solitude? Being all alone day in, day out? Even Grizzly Adams had a bear companion and a few other friends in the wilderness. Yes, we need companions. God recognizes for Adam, as it is written, it is not good for man or woman to be alone. When Jane Christensen and I go visit people to deliver fresh soup, warm bread, and a box of food uh, the second and fourth weekends of the month, we often visit people who have a spouse, or some may be single. As a widow or widower, they may have a dog or cat or some other companion that gives them life. Who has God provided for you? How does that person or creature give you life? 
for our family, our dog Lila is constantly being held, talked about, looked at with her crazy configurations as she sleeps and lounges on a couch or chair. She's a precious companion for us, and we need her. Finally, our last C, C word, should I say, is confession. Confession. In Genesis 3, we hear that Adam and Eve are enticed by the serpent that leads them into the temptation of essentially trying to be God. See, the serpent encourages them to eat from the tree in the middle of the garden that God said to not touch. Here's a line. But the serpent said to the woman, You will not die, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. In other words, they wanted to be all-knowing and wise like God, so they disobeyed God and did what the tempter said. Have you ever disobeyed God? Or a parent? A law? <laughs> Almost every day. We like to be independent, in control, call the shots, and we sometimes think we are smarter than others. Yes, even smarter than God. As Scripture says, we are like sheep who have gone astray, each to his or her own way. See, what confession is, is about humility. The word humility takes us back to Adam, or humus, the soil of the earth, which Adam and Eve are formed out of. Out of dust we came, and to dust we shall return. In a culture where humanism reigns, that is, where we as humans play God, rather than us humbly turning to God, honoring God and doing what God calls us to do, rather our pursuit for greed and pleasures lead us down the road of destruction, destroying God's creation and even the relationships we have with one another. Multiple times in the Bible, we hear words like this from 1 Peter, all of you clothe yourselves with humility toward one another because God opposes the proud but shows favor to the humble. We begin our worship services with confession, precisely to name that we have harmed God, that we have harmed God's creation and the people in our lives. This helps us recognize our need for God. We need God's forgiveness. We need God's help. We need God's grace to restore us so that we may restore our world all its vegetation, creatures, and companions. Let us now humble ourselves in prayer. Creator God, creator of the earth and the whole universe, this is the world you created for us to care for and cultivate. Stir our hearts towards intentional care and compassion. Cleanse us from our ways that lead us to destruction of your earth and our companions on this earth. Ultimately, help us to honor you in all we do. In Jesus' name, amen. God created us to cultivate the earth, to be in companionship with human beings, with God's creatures, and with himself. And ultimately, that we are to confess that when we have fallen short of his glory, when we have sinned, that we turn to him. And that's when we ultimately turn to Jesus and recognize what a friend we have in Jesus. Everybody has tried. Everybody knows heartbreak, isolation, oh, 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 we can lay our burdens down, lay our burdens down. What a friend we have in Jesus, east to west my sins are gone, I see grace on every horizon, and forever and ever. 
Everybody knows sorrow, devastation. Thankful for all the ways that God blesses our lives. We share those blessings with others through the ministries here at St. Olaf. Your offering plays an important part in our ability to serve others. We offer a number of options to give in this time, either online with your phone or computer, or by dropping off or mailing to our church. You can find more information on our website. We join our brothers and sisters around the world confessing our faith through the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Lord, open our field of view. We are limited when focused solely on this world's events around us. Turn our focus toward you and the wonderful things you have in store for us. We pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Help us, Lord, to pause and reflect on 9-11, a tragic day in our nation's history, but how the events of that day brought us together as one people. The police officers and firefighters are heroes How quickly some forget. Bring us back that genuine sense of community, of neighbor helping neighbor. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Thank you, Lord, for seeing man's need to have a companion, not wanting us to be alone. You formed woman and gave us a wife, someone to spend life's moments with, someone to help us through the day. Lord, let us show our appreciation for the special gift that we have been given showing our spouse how much they mean to us each and every day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The children here, the children of our church, are the future of St. Olaf, the future in our community. Today we celebrate the start of the Sunday school year. Help us inspire them to follow you, Lord, to study your word. Grow their faith through worship time with family, instruction through the church, and interactions with their brothers and sisters in Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Please join me in praying for those from our congregation. William, the family of Dennis Schultz, Ray, Paul, Marlene, Carrie, Kathy L., Andrew Schneider, 
and Addie Craftsman, and for those serving in the military around the globe and those who have returned home. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We are far from perfect. Help us, Lord, to recognize our sin, that we could confess it in our prayer, to repent and turn from those ways, that you could mold us closer to your own image. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we raise these prayers to you, trusting in your endless mercy. In your Son, Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I invite you in the context of your home, if you have some bread handy and some wine or grape juice, that you could grab that now. You could put this on pause and you can join me for the words of institution. As you recall, in the night in which our Lord was betrayed, he took bread, broke it, gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Following supper, he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all the drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us join in the prayer he taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Thank you for joining us for our pet blessing. I will begin. God created us, human beings, male and female, and all the creatures on the earth. You, O oh Lord, gave us a purpose in caring for your creation, in cultivating the soil, in tending to the vegetation, in trees, lakes, rivers, and oceans, and using it for our well-being while honoring and respecting what you created. You created humans and even our pets for companionship. As you said, Creator God, it is not good for man or woman to be alone. Therefore, let us proclaim the glory of our Creator, saying, O God, how wonderful are the works of your hands. Blessed are you, O Lord of the universe. You create the animals and give us the ability to train them to help us in our work. O God, how wonderful are the works of your hands. Blessed are you, O Lord of the universe. You give us food from animals and plants to replenish our energies. O oh God, how wonderful are the works of your hands. Blessed are you, O Lord of the universe, for the sake of our comfort you give us domestic animals as companions. O oh God, how wonderful are the works of your hands. Blessed are you, O Lord of the universe, you care for us even as you care for the birds of the air. O oh God, how wonderful are the works of your hands. Blessed are you, O Lord of the universe. You offered your Son to us as the Passover lamb, and in him willed that we should be called your children. O God, how wonderful are the works of your hands. And then if you have your pet with you, um, this is a time where you can put your hands on your pet or near and, uh, and touch the animal. Bless, O Lord, Lila. You guys can join me in this. Bless, O Lord, Lila, and fill our hearts with thanksgiving for her being. Creator God, thank you for this precious creature you have given us. Help us to love her, to care for her, and be blessed by her companionship in this journey called life. May God, who created the animals of this earth, continue to protect and sustain us now, now and forever. Amen. Amen. All right, so this is our first pet blessing weekend. Yeah, so maybe at the 5 o'clock somebody brought a pet. We're hoping at the 9 o'clock kids brought pets. We will have brought a turtle. 
because our dog would misbehave. And so we are singing all God's creatures have a place in the choir. So if you are watching at home, I invite you to stand up. I know if you've got one of those automatic recliners that can kind of gradually have you go up and feel free to stand in your place. If you want to do exercises and go along with me when I go down and up, that would be fantastic. Then try to sing along with the song with me. It was a hard one to manage. All right, let's do it. in the choir. Some sing low, some sing higher, some sing out loud on a telephone wire. Some just clap their hands or paws or anything they got now. All God's creatures got a place in the choir. Some sing low, some sing higher, some sing out loud on a telephone wire. Some just clap their hands or paws or anything they got now. Listen to the top where the little bird sings Oh, the melodies and the high notes ringing And the hoot owl cries over everything And the blackbird disagrees Singing in the nighttime, singing in the day When the little duck quacks and he's on his way And the otter hasn't got much to say And the porcupine talks to himself all God's creatures got a place in the choir. Some sing low, some sing higher, some sing out loud on a telephone wire. Some just clap their hands or paws or anything they got now. The dogs and the cats, they take up the middle while a honeybee hums and the cricket fiddles, a donkey brays and the pony neighs and the old gray badger sighs. Listen to the bass and the one on the bottom where the bullfrog croaks and the hippopotamus moans and groans with a big to-do and the old cow just goes moo. All God's creatures got a place in the choir. Some sing low, some sing higher and sing all loud on a telephone wire. Some just clap their hands or paws or anything they got now. It's a simple song, a little song everywhere By the ox and the fox and the grizzly bear The dopey alligator and the hawk above The sly old weasel and the turtle dove All God's creatures got a place in the choir Some sing low, some sing higher Some sing out loud on a telephone wire Some just clap their hands or paws Or anything they got now All God's creatures got a place in the choir Some sing low some sing higher, some sing out loud on a telephone wire. Some just clap their hands or paws or anything they got now. All God's creatures got a place in the choir. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. All God's creatures got a place in the choir. Some sing low, some sing higher, some sing out loud on a telephone wire. Some just clap their hands or paws or anything they got now. Some just clap their hands or paws or anything they got now. All the simple song, little song, everywhere are the odds.